record. Hello, 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 beautiful people. Thank you so much for joining my webinar, What Women Really Want. Woo! The secret to a loving relationship. What a juicy title. Now, let me share my screen so everyone can see. All right, we'll start with um, a little bit about, um, oh, say, sorry. <laughs> We start with the first slide. Yes, that will be helpful, isn't it? Um, so I've been uh, receiving some complaints from men that uh, they feel overwhelmed, they feel stressed, uh, they feel frustrated because they cannot understand their um, wives or partners' uh, wants. Um, us women tend to be very moody for whatever reason, you know. Uh, I feel really sorry for men because we are rather complicated beings, women. So sorry about that, men. However, you can always um, learn. Now, uh, I'm just checking if you belong to, uh, if you experience one of these um, symptoms. Are you stressed because the money is causing troubles in your relationship? Um, are you hurting because of your ineffective communication or pointing and blaming? Yeah, pointing and blaming is the easiest, uh, the first kind of like fallback mechanism that uh, couples tend to do because they can't communicate well with each other, right? And are you scared of losing your sparks in your relationship, um, especially after being together for a while, you know? Uh, the either the wife or the husband just keep saying no to um, love making or something like that and so um, you tend to lose sparks in your relationship all right so just checking in with um, everyone uh, whether you're experiencing any of this one or two or three or all of the above so uh, you don't have to say anything and did you know according to relationship australia uh, they do a research in 2021 that most people find their living arrangement during the COVID-19 restrictions challenging. Of course, <laughs> I can't, uh, you know, get enough of people complaining like, oh my God, this lockdown is just going on forever. Um, now, among those, uh, among the four groups that they did research on, one is singles living alone, singles living with friends, Couples living alone and couples living with family members. Now they found that the last group is the most affected by the restrictive living arrangement for the worse. In fact, there are 42% of couples uh, experiencing negative uh, effects in their relationship due to this restriction, okay? And um, I know uh, for a fact, also one of my clients, she is a family lawyer. And when I chat with her, hey, um, how's business? Oh, she said double, absolutely double. So a lot of couples are having uh, problems to begin with, right? And it seems like the lockdown bringing, you know, if you can imagine a pimple, bringing this pimple to burst in a big way. So uh, a lot of them head on to the family lawyer straight away. So they're making a killing at the moment. Now, did you know that the top three causes of breakups previous to pandemic were infidelity, money, and communication? All right, fair enough. Uh, probably we know that uh, once you lose the trust in relationship, it's uh, it's very difficult to rebuild the trust, and therefore infidelity is there. You know, it's it's very uh, it's not nice, obviously, to be cheated by somebody. Um, however, I'm saying that uh, there is a way back. It's not like uh, for some people this can be uh, fixed, yeah? I'm saying uh, for truth that this problem can be fixed if you are open to that, obviously. And then secondly, money. Uh, money causes a lot of uh, problems in relationship, probably not so much of the money itself, but the communication about money. 
right? It can be very, very fiery. And number three, of course, you know, this is what I handle most of the time is communication because everyone, you know, comes different uh, from different family. They have different baggage that they uh, bring into the relationship from childhood, from past marriage, from past relationship, and they all communicate differently. We have different communication styles and hence sometimes what we're saying, meaning different things to our partner and hence the miscommunication happens. Now, however, the trend is now changed to loneliness, domestic violence and miscommunication. As you can see, communication is still there at the top three reason of breakups lately. Now you think, oh, that's weird. Loneliness, why loneliness? If couples are under the same roof like 24 seven, why loneliness? I mean, I can understand if single living alone, then okay, you will be lonely, right? Um, well, it's escapism. We escape to work, right? We escape to social media, for example. We escaped to Netflix. Oh my God, I just discovered this new thing called Netflix. I'm a bit late, obviously, uh, in lockdown 2021. It can be very addictive. There's some good, good shows in there. And gaming, you know, because now uh, at the moment, we can't go to TAB, TAB, if, if you normally like to... Uh, you know, gamble a little bit or going to clubs, for example, to pay the pokies. Uh, so now you can game online and that can be very addictive in taking time off uh, your partner or your relationship. So you don't actually connect with each other. And uh, the fridge, I know for fact that someone in this Zoom room know very, very well that relationship with the fridge has been on the increase lately, especially during lockdown. You get bored, guess what? Let's open the fridge. Let's find out what's in the fridge. There you go. You don't have a relationship with your partner, but you have a good relationship. Or is it not good relationship with the fridge? Now, secondly, domestic violence. I heard a lot of this. Um, and I reckon that because of the miscommunication, that uh, a lot of people have, they can't communicate well and they become so frustrated, they become resentful and therefore they go into violence, kind of like the last resort. <laughs> the fridge never says no, someone said in the chat box. <laughs> Yes, you may experience rejection from your partner, but the fridge never said no. Ah, I love that. That's so cool. Um, yeah, domestic violence. Um, men, um, as far as I know, a lot of them, not, not all men, obviously, I'm just generalizing here, don't have a very good relationship with emotions or expressing emotions. And the easiest uh, one type emotion that they can um fall back to easily is anger. So uh, during this uh, pressure cooker environment, they tend to revert to anger because that's, that's the one that they know. That's the one that they're very familiar with. And therefore I am hosting this just to bring awareness to that, right? We don't have to, you know, uh, go there, you know, being uh, violent to our partners we can communicate better and check in, do the regular check-in. How are you going? How are you feeling? I feel frustrated because of such and such rather than revert to uh, violence. Now, a little bit about myself. I came um, at the tender age of 21 to get married to my first husband. I came from Indonesia and uh, back then I was raised in a very religious family. Um, you know, there's a lot of guilt and shame um, revolve around that and that didn't feel home to me. That's not very good for my soul, I feel. I mean, they had the best intention of educating me um, in the values that they know. However, I feel that Mm, I'm not home and therefore I always dream to uh, go overseas and I always want to have a foreigner 
as a husband, as a partner. Now, I found the second best option, uh, which is an Indonesian man, but he's been living in Australia for some time. And we uh, pen paling for about six and a half years. And um, by the age of 21, then I decided, okay, uh, let's get married, even though my father said, hmm, questionable, you're so young, like, why, why are you getting married so young? Because I would like to escape to another country. And uh, because, of course, I was uh, in love with my uh, first husband, right? Well, 10 years uh, going on, um, it was an abusive relationship, unfortunately, as you um, heard, I mentioned about domestic violence. So um, it wasn't very violent physically, like I think I was blue and purple, maybe about two times only. But um, over the period of 10 years, almost every day that we would fight. And that's very draining, that, um, that is very tiring, very stressful. So then I gained um, depression, I gained um, anxiety, you know, I lost my confidence uh, because of that. So after three attempts, then I left. Um, and in my self-healing journey, I went to see a couple of therapists, went to several self-development seminars, and I went back to college to study counseling and life coaching. And straight away, I knew that I would be a coach, not a counselor, and my niche would be in relationship because I am passionate and compassionate to help others in a similar sort of predicament. And I would love to bring, you know, shine the light on stigma on mental health, you know, so uh, you don't have to be shame, ashamed of your mental health state. You know, when, when I'm feeling depressed, I will, I will say that at the moment I'm feeling depressed, but I am looking for ways to bring myself up and out again. Um, one time I, uh, I had that, you know, moment when I broke up with my uh, past boyfriend uh, that I wanted to die, like I want to jump off um, a mall. Uh, so that's only one time, but most of the time, even though I have depression, I choose life and that's very, very important. That's why we need to be able to talk about that and ask for support because um, I am here to encourage and um, inspire other people to really put your hand up for support if you're experiencing something like this, all right? And yeah, the side effects or drawback of not understanding what women want and uh, do nothing um, about that. So what do you think are the side effects, all right? Uh, do you think that separation may happen? Yeah, divorce and maybe eventually court, especially if you have uh, kids, that can be very, very messy. And it can take a long period of time because family court system is now very, very uh, jammed, especially during lockdown, you know, um, less and less chance for people to appear in court, obviously. And it's just drag on for years and years. And guess what? It's creating stress onto the couples, creating stress onto the children, and it's just not very healthy for everyone. Right? Um, so um, in regards to you know, stress with custody battle and assets as well, um, I reckon prevention is better than cure. And that's why I'm here to give you guys support. And inspiration. Now, imagine, wouldn't it be uh, great to grow financial wealth together without any resentment? I mentioned financial again, simply because, you know, uh, previous to lockdown, money is one of the top three biggest um, reason for uh, relationship breakup. Now, how fantastic would it be to communicate lovingly with each other without holding grudges? You know, sometimes, okay, yeah, we want to move forward, but then there's still uh, bits in our heart that we hold grudge and therefore we can't love fully. We can't communicate fully. You know, would it be fantastic if we uh, no longer, you know, have to hang on to that? And how amazing would it be to reignite your passion for each other and feel attractive again? 
yeah, sometimes, uh, or there, therefore the infidelity bit was one of the top reasons, probably because the relationship has become stale, become cold, and therefore, you know, it seems like the grass is greener in the neighbor's um, backyard. And uh, my suggestion would be have a look in your own backyard, you know, why don't you water your grass so it doesn't uh, the neighbor's grass doesn't become greener than your own grass now i'm sharing a feedback from one of my clients amali uh, so she actually initiated this um couple one-on-one -on -one couple coaching session with me with her husband because she was feeling disconnected in her relationship with her husband and during the coaching session, she really enjoyed learning and receiving massages. Yes, in my one-on-one -on -one coaching package for couples only, I teach couples how to massage each other for relaxation and intimacy. Um, the physical touch helped me to feel connected. It was good to have a discussion in a safe environment with someone objective to hear our views and to help find resolution on how to overcome some of our issues. And guess what? After the sessions, we feel truly loved and it reinvigorated our sex life. Woohoo! Winning, winning, winning. It was a positive experience. Um, so thank you so much, Amali. So uh, she is a mom of two. So I'm sure a lot of couples out there can relate to their problems, you know, when you start feeling disconnected. And uh, voila, now is the secret of what women really want. So uh, we like to be listened to. Yeah, ladies, we like to be listened to. Oh, sorry, gentlemen, <laughs> I should say. We love to be listened to. Now, the thing is, you know, sometimes listen, there are three levels of listening, right? So the first one is just to hear the words that, okay, she's saying blah, blah, all right? And level number two uh, like a friend, like when we chit chat with a friend, we can say, oh yeah, your experience and I know, me too, me too. Now that's friendship level kind of listening. Yeah, me too, me too. And the third one is active listening, whereby we give the space for the person that we listen to fully. So we don't cut them out except when we want to ask questions to make the story a bit clearer. Yeah. So uh, listen to the whole story. Don't interrupt. And then you paraphrase or you reframe to check whether you get her story right. Okay. So in my own language, let me know if I'm wrong, is blah, blah, blah. So you paraphrase or you reframe. So you get the understanding right. Now, number two, this one is understanding. I understand that generally speaking, men are wired to fix the problem. But in this moment, men, don't be Mr. Fix it, all right? We just want to be understood. You can say this, wow, I didn't realize that you felt that way. That must be difficult for you. Now, that's when you convey compassion and understanding. Sometimes, uh, yes, we want you to provide us with solution, but sometimes, no, we just want to be understood. That's all. You know, we are full of emotion, ladies, right? Oh, is it the time of the month? Oh, is it because we are perimenopausal? Oh, is it because we are menopausal? Oh, my God, we don't understand our own body, let alone the men understand. So we would love your understanding of our situation at the moment. Number three will be security. We love feeling secure and being supported in this department. Now, men tend to understand the financial security only, but not so much with the emotional security. But us ladies, we need both, right? So what is emotional security? This is, um, I will give you an example from my ex-husband, right? He always said in the middle of our argument, I want a divorce, I want a divorce, I want a divorce, all the time. That seems to be his uh, fallback mechanism or fallback sentence. You know, it's like uh, he wants to um, threaten me 
that he will leave the relationship because I'm not following what he wanted, right? So um, I assumed that either he was trying to control me or he didn't understand, he didn't know how to respond himself to a heated argument. That's why he threatened or he just throw in, chuck in the words, I want a divorce, I want a divorce. And once I actually gave him what he wanted, he didn't like that. And he kept asking me back, you know, three times. And after the third time, uh, it's like, ah, that's it. I can't handle this anymore. That's it, the end. Let's get a divorce, okay? So uh, us ladies would love our rock. We want you to be our rock, babe. I got you. I got this. You know, I am here for you. We will face all these struggles no matter what together. And in terms of financial security, say, for example, if uh, your wife has lost uh, her job or her business due to lockdown, etc., please comfort her and say, OK, we will work on this together. I will support you financially. You don't you have nothing to worry about. I got you, right? So we love this. And then the next point, for men to have higher level of awareness and emotional consciousness. For example, a uh, higher level of awareness. <laughs> I reckon this is because uh, sometimes you are not being present. Let me give you an example. My second husband now, Andy, uh, he keeps for many years now, he keeps losing three things, his glasses, his wallet, and his mobile phone. Those three things, the three essential things that he needs to carry everywhere uh, all the time, all right? And guess what? He just lost his glasses uh, hanging from a, a glasses chain, I mean, uh, I have to request for someone to make a glasses chain simply because he just kept putting his glasses everywhere. So I, was, I gave the idea, why don't you put it on your neck? So at least you know it's on your neck, but unfortunately and they got lost and now he's wearing my glasses. <laughs> Luckily, I have my old glasses then kind of like similar in terms of prescription so he can wear them until he get his new one um, arrive. So uh, this is level we like higher level of awareness. Now, uh, pointing those things to him, you know, it's, it's not a big deal per se, but because we've been doing that for so long, you know, remind them, oh, uh, don't forget about your glasses, don't forget about your wallet, for example, over a period of time, a long period of time, then we get frustrated, we get, you know, very annoyed. Um, so if you can change that, that'll be great. In terms of emotional consciousness, I'll give you an example. Um, one of my clients, I mean, once you become my client, obviously, you know, things are uh, confidential, but I can share uh, just a couple of stories so you can learn from and you never know who the client is, right? So one client, uh, she actually grieved because of um, she lost her father and she lost her sister-in-law. So two family members lost um, in a short period of time. So she's grieving. And of course, her behavior changed and her husband um, couldn't deal with that, couldn't understand that. And um, he said, mm, you change. You know, why are you change? Why are you angry? Why are you like this? You change. Go, you know, deal with it yourself. And when you're ready, when you come back to your normal self, come back to me. Yes, I don't recommend that. All right, that's quite harsh. And um, it is because he's not emotionally conscious. When you are grieving, um, you go, uh, you can Google, you know, five stages of grief. So someone can be angry, someone can be in denial, someone can be depressed, someone can uh, reach to the acceptance level, uh, someone can go to the bargaining stage, you know, it, and it can ping pong from one point to another point uh, at any time. So um, I know they, they, have, they can change because of grief. So if you can be there for your partner uh, throughout her grief, whatever it may be, it can be 
the loss of family member, it can be the loss of a job, business, anything. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be dead. And so you can understand um, that actually they need your support more than ever. You need to tap into your emotional side and be conscious about that more than ever. The last one is intimacy. Do you think we want sex? Do you think we want orgasm? Hell yeah, we want all that. You know, not just for you, not just men want this, but women also want this. But men and women are wired differently. So um, we want intimacy first. Then, you know, um, we want the, you know, great love making sessions, definitely. So if you can uh, kind of like uh, do a long sort of foreplay for us, starting from, I don't know, doing something that will de-stress us, for example. Maybe you can give us a little bit of massage or maybe you can help us clean. Maybe if you can help us cook, for example, that is actually offering intimacy. And maybe if you can uh, chat with us, you know, checking in, you know, uh, what are your stress? What are your fears? You know, can, can I help you uh, reach your goal, for example? And that is... Um, intimacy that is closeness for us women okay so uh, if you can go uh, that way so prefer intimacy rather than just sex you know um, that would be great that's what we want so let's watch this video and you can practice this on your partner I will stop sharing and I will go on to this Green now. Okay, so can you see that? Right. Hello, beautiful couples. I hope you can hear My this. My name is Ingrid Galloway, Relationship Coach and Chief Relaxation Officer of Kayangan. I um, am here to teach you a few movements on how to massage your partner for relaxation. And the reason why I love couple massage lessons so much is because it's encompassing five love languages, right? The first one is physical touch. So obviously you are going to touch your partner and your partner is going to touch you. Number two, uh, work of information. So at the end, you will say how much you love each other. And number three um, is spending quality time together. Obviously you're not doing anything else. Only spending time with your partner. Number four is um, active service because you are actually doing something for your partner. And number five is gift giving because right now you are gifting your touch to your partner. So uh, let's begin with the back movements. So uncover your partner's back. Okay. And um, use a few pumps of oil, make sure that there's enough. Warm up your uh, palms so it's not freezing cold. And then we start at the top. So whether you do this on a massage table or you do this on your uh, own bed, you can do that. All right. So you just kneel or sit, um, you know, like so. All right. So we are going to do the spreading movement. So from the top of the shoulder, Spread down to the waist and to the side and finish at the base of the head. All right. So you are going to push down at the side and to the side and up. Pull at the base of the head. I'm going to do that one more time. Down. So that's the spreading movement. And I call that efflorage. All right, so that's efflorage. And then the second movement, you can focus on one side of the back, pushing down. Oh, lots of tension on the shoulder normally, okay? So you go next. 
to the spine, not massaging the spine, all right? So avoid the spine, but go firmer beside the spine. All right, just be my muscle over here, and then do that again. So a bit firmer on the top of the shoulder, and then you go down the body. Go down. All right, so that's one side, and you do the other side. Down. Avoiding the spine, but massage firmer on this band of muscle here. Okay. Lovely. So if you can do those two movements, on the back. That would be nice. All right. So now I am going to teach you two movements on the head because receiving a head massage is just so lovely, isn't it? Okay. So ask your partner to face back. So if you position your um, hands like so and place it on uh, his or her scalp, and then you start massaging like so. So maybe you can start your index finger on the um, temples, right? Alleviating the stress headaches that a lot of people have. And then move up. So circular motion, move up to the top of the head. So you're doing it like so. Okay, starting from the temples. And then you move up, circular motion. And then you move up, finish on top of the head. So that's movement number three, circular motion on the scalp. And then the last move is moving. So I like to start from the forehead, stroking the forehead like so, and then you comb your partner's hair, combing. It's very relaxing and very soothing. It's easier to do when they have long hair, but it's not impossible to do it if they have short hair. So feel, you know, uh, you can feel your uh, finger strokes on the scalp like so, okay? So I like to begin from the forehead. Doing that, alternate hands, combing. But instead of using a comb, you use your hands, your fingers. And like so. Okay, so those are the four movements uh, that you can begin with and continue with your practice. Uh, do several um, repetition per movement, so um, you will feel relaxed, your partner will feel relaxed, and you can strengthen your relationship that way. So um, I also do um, the full package for this. I mean, I know this one is only a short one. However, I do couple powerhouse diamond package, one-on-one -on -one couples coaching, includes the massage lessons for relaxation and intimacy. Um, post coaching and products that will um, encourage the romantic ambience. So that package is called Couple Powerhouse Diamond Package. And also, I have uh, 
couples retreat called enhance your intimacy retreat. So um keep me posted if you're interested to find out more, let me know and you can go to my website www.kayangman.com.au that's a page y a n g a n dot com dot a u. Thank you so much for watching and have fun. Okay, okay. so okay. 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 my name is Ingrid Galloway, Oops. relationship coach and Hang on. relaxation officer of Kayangan. Oh. I uh... <laughs> oh, okay. Here we go. Share screen again. Hope you enjoy that and, and uh, learn a little bit. So now let's close our eyes. I am aware of the time. So we're just going to do a short guided meditation. Okay. Let's close our eyes. And take three deep breaths, slowly in and slowly out. Set your intention to relax your body and to relax your mind. Making sure that you're no longer frowning, your forehead, your shoulders drop, your arms flop to the side. And keep breathing slowly and breathe out slowly. Once you're more connected with your body, breath and mind, I invite you to imagine that you are in the same room with your partner. You're sitting by the dining table. You just finished your um, online couples massage lesson. So you both feel a lot more relaxed and feel connected, more connected with each other. And in front of you, there's a spread of beautiful, yummy food for dinner and with candles everywhere. And I invite you to gaze into each other's eyes. Just sitting on the dining chairs, gaze into each other's eyes. And without saying a word, communicating through your eye gazing how much you love your partner. Perhaps I love you because you are such a great provider for our family. Perhaps saying I love you because you are my rock. You're always here no matter what. Perhaps I love you because you are so understanding and always listen to what I want and what I need. And you're always there to guide me during my most stressful moments, whatever the reason was. Thank you. And I love you. So in your own mind, Say these words. Thank you. And I love you. And go back to your breathing. Take a nice, relaxing breath in. And slowly out. Take a nice, relaxing breath in. And slowly out. And when you're ready, I invite you to open up your eyes.
Welcome back to the webinar. I hope you feel a bit more relaxed and more in love to your partner, with your partner. So uh, let's have a look at David's feedback. Now we did the couple powerhouse package with Ingrid after 20 years of marriage and it was truly inspiring. You know, throughout the sessions, Ingrid listened, reflected and helped us to rediscover intimacy. Uh, David said in the room that he never, after one session, he never uh, have experienced listening, being listened to like this before. So obviously, you know, they uh, have continuous tiff throughout the 20 years of marriage due to different style of communication. And first session in, he said, oh, wow, I've never experienced that I've been listened to like this before. So there you go, guys, whether you've been married for one year, two years, five years, 20 years, uh, there is always um, room for improvement. And you, you only know what you know, right? So if you never experienced a better communication before, uh, you can learn. You can always learn. There's always room for improvement. So uh, there is help one-on-one -on -one coaching called Copper Powerhouse Diamond Package. So that consists of uh, nine sessions and three of them including couples massage lesson for relaxation and intimacy, right? Or if you are uh, comfortable, you know, uh, gathering with other couples in February, 2022, um, 16th of February, and uh, that's a Wednesday until the Sunday that week. So five days only, uh, five days, four nights. I have couples retreat in country New South Wales, uh, exactly in North Arm Cove called Enhance Your Intimacy. So um, especially if you're drifting apart or have some sort of issues in your relationship and you are stressed to the max, you need to relax, you need to sleep for a change and you can remove yourself from the source of your stress, um, come and spend time with me for five days in country New South Wales, okay? Now, special offer for today for 24 hours, complimentary 60 minute couple coaching session and group support in a private Facebook group. And um, I collaborated, uh, I collaborate with four um, different experts in my couples retreat, one talking about money, one talking about nutrition, one talk about um, ceremony. Uh, so there will be a fire ceremony, commitment ceremony, and um, another one talking about um, exercise, right? And uh, Diane here, the expert talking about money, giving the extra bonus, complimentary one wealth breakthrough session, okay? And that includes um, uh, your financial starting point to discuss about that, your final goal, and discussing about steps you can take to get you there. So remember, this extra bonus is only 24 hours. Um, so if you have um, more questions, definitely let's have a chat and book you in. So here is my... Uh, details, phone number, and you can request um, to book a half an hour free chat with me on my website, kayangan.com.au. So you can take a screenshot, uh, screenshot of this. So you have my details in your phone. And definitely, I encourage you to book a half an hour free chat with me and request that through the website. So there you go, people. Um, stop sharing. Okay, uh, is there any questions? Um, that was a really good presentation. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I've got to run yep. to my next yep. one. Yeah. Thank you so much for your energy and wisdom and time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, so. guys. Hey. Bye. 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 Yeah, likewise. Uh,